All right. All right, thank you everybody again uh, for joining us. Um, we are live now on Facebook. My name is Felipe. I'm with the San Diego Financial Literacy Center, Debt Wave Credit Counseling. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator here. Today we're going to go over teaching kids about money. Um, so, so again, thank you for joining us uh, for Smart With Your Money Live. This is one of my favorite presentations recently. Uh, I really enjoy uh, not only presenting, but then going and trying some of these fun little activities, um, you know, with my little ones. We'll go ahead, I'll go through different age groups, different games to try, different things that, you know, regardless of where you are in your parenting slash financial journey, things you can implement uh, and, and things you can try. First, um, if this is your first time joining us for one of these, I do like using GIFs as much as possible. And if you have little, little ones, I'm sure you recognize this little guy, uh, JJ and the whole Coco Melon team. Uh, I hear them all the time. I can hear the jingle in my head nonstop. Um, we did a cross country road trip last week and I heard a lot of Coco Melon. Uh, but basically start as soon as possible. If you haven't started talking to your kids about money, uh, regardless of, of how old they are, start now. Um, if they're older, it's okay. There's time to catch up. And whether or not you've been actively teaching them money, uh, you have because they've been watching you and they've been watching your spending habits and good or bad, they are taking notes. Now, it doesn't mean that if you have good spending habits, they will have good spending habits. I'm like an example of that. My parents, great spending habits. I didn't uh, it, it's, but for years have any kind of good spending habits and you might have bad spending habits and that's okay because your kids may not end up with bad spending habits they may look at you and say mm, I don't really want to do what they're doing um, but whether you're actively teaching or not your kids are paying attention so start having that conversation about money start implementing money learning things as you go um, regardless of what age your little ones are um, so Kids make money uh, <laughs> more than even I thought. Uh, so, you know, they are part of the economy. Um, according to this money.com article, I found uh, young people, and this is a little bit older, it was, it was right the pre pandemic, so right the beginning of the pandemic. Um, kids were, young people were receiving an average weekly allowance of $30. So, about $6 and change based on about five hours worth of work that the, that the kids reported. But that adds up to about $1,500 a year. Um, obviously, the little ones, the much younger ones, are going to be making less, and then the teens will be making more. But, you know, it, it, it's, it, it adds up. And, and um, you know, uh, most of the people reporting, most Americans, um, say that the purpose of the allowance was to teach their kids the value of money, right? And so you have the right idea for it. You know, you're know, getting them an allowance so they can go ahead and, you know, uh, learn the value behind that money. Um, unfortunately, um, <laughs> although everyone thinks that it's a great idea, um, kids also spend a lot of money. Only 3% of those parents, the same parents that said it was very important to learn the importance of money, only 3% say that their kids were actually saving it, um, but only 32% of them were teaching their kids about money. So the idea is, yes, I'm gonna give you this allowance, uh, for most people, uh, according to the survey, is I'm gonna give you this allowance, but then I'm not gonna show you, it's so that you learn how to handle money, but then I'm not gonna actively, every single month or every single time I give you money, actively teach personal finances the best that I can. So if you're giving your kids money with the purpose of having them learn to use it better, you know, you want to incorporate the education component that goes along with it. So you're not just kind of throwing money at them and hoping that they figure it out as they go. Now, I'm a big fan of letting kids make their own mistakes as well. I'll go over that in a little bit, but you do want to provide a little bit of that guidance and, and, and constantly 
drill away at that uh, <laughs> personal finance. It may seem like they're not listening and they may not be listening, but maybe at some point they make a good financial decision just because you have constantly, uh, you know, put little grains of financial education along the way for them to kind of pick up. I said, I've made a lot of bad financial decisions in my teens and early 20s. Um, one really good one I made is that after test driving a, it wasn't brand new, but a certified used bright yellow Corvette. Um, and then this was in the early 2000s when credit was easier to get. Uh, the guy was like, yeah, I'll get you approved. You said you got two jobs, I'll get you approved, no problem. And the only reason I walked away is thinking, and when my mom sees me pull up in this, she is going to lose her mind. Uh, so although I didn't listen to her most of the time when it came to save your money, don't get another credit card and all that, I did listen that one time and it saved me. It, it, you know, who knows what gas would have cost insurance. I had done none of that research. That's the whole car buying presentation. I did none of it. Um, I probably would have gotten myself some tickets too. Uh, so, you know, teaching that responsibility along with just not giving them the money but, but allowing them to, to properly uh, use it. Um, <clears throat> so according to parents though, most of the money is spent outings with friends followed by digital devices and downloads, video games, that kind of stuff, uh, and then toys. Um, so cell phones, toys, things kids like, which makes sense. Um, you know, I don't think that's changed since you know, you or I were kids, maybe just the platforms and the way of spending it uh, has changed to where, you know, we used to have to go to the mall to go shopping, for example, and they don't, kids don't have to do that these days. Um, so it's important when you start to try and, you know, form your children's money history, try and look back and ask yourself, what's my money history? Uh, and, and it may not always be fun. It may not always be a positive positive money memories but all that kind of plays into how we view money as an individual and then you are creating some of those money memories uh the, some of that money history then for your children and and it's okay if you've made mistakes along the way it's okay if you've fallen into debt along the way it's all can be used as a positive learning experience for them uh it, it can be something you know that uh, you at some point, depending on their age, share with them and say, you look, this is what I did, you know, and it did, you know, this happened, X, Y, Z. And um, maybe you don't do that. Uh, so what's your money history? Try and think back, who taught you about money? If anyone, um, what money messages did you get from your parents, if any? And then, you know, try and think back of your earliest money memory. Was it a good one? Um, did you like it? Did you dislike it? You know, it may take a while to drill back and really get that first money memory. Um, I thought I had it. And then one day I was out for a run and I ran past the 7-Eleven and I was like, you know what? I remember I was about three going for a walk with my grandpa who had just retired and he would stop and buy me a Slurpee. To this day, I love darn Slurpees. Um, that was a good money memory. And I hadn't really put two and two together that it was a, a, a money memory. Um, until I was, you know, jogging past that 7-Eleven. Um, it's a liquor store now, but it was a 7-Eleven back in the day. Um, so it, 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 um, it kind of triggered it. And I was like, oh, that's my first money memory. So it was a good one. Uh, but, you know, try and look back and, and see what your money history is and how that might incorporate and how that might affect it with a money history that you're then passing along to your little ones. We do a lot of presentations in the community, community college to adults, veterans, uh, their families, you know, at senior homes. And uh, one of the more common feedbacks that we get on our, on our exit surveys is, man, I wish I'd have known that in high school, or I wish I'd have known that a long time ago. I could have used this information. So if you ever find yourself saying, man, I wish I'd have known that, teach that to your kids. Um, if you'd ever said, I wish I had known about savings, investing, the dangers of debt, whatever it was when I was in high school, when I was in college, when I 
teach that to your kids so that they don't find themselves in that same situation. You know, again, it's not a perfect science. You teach it to them doesn't mean they're going to go follow it, but at least you give them the opportunity. At least they don't have to look back and say, man, I wish I would have known you know, how debt can get me into so much trouble, um, how, how investing could benefit me so much if I'd have done it from the beginning, you know, or, or something as simple as how much easier finances are if I just use and follow a budget, you know, or, or just handling money, the relationship with money, um, whatever it is that you wish you would have known teach that to your kids and then teach to your kids the same thing that, that, that you say, man, I'm glad someone, parents, grandparents, you know, a, a teacher, whoever, the SDFLC guys, uh, taught, I, I'm glad they taught me this. Um, and, and, and that's really helped me. I'm going to make sure that I pass that information along to uh, the little ones. So you, you take what you, what you wish you'd have known, and what you were thankful that you did know, and then teach all that to, to any little ones that you have or, or just little ones you interact with. They don't even have to be your kids. Uh, you know, it might just be, you know, family members. It might be your, your nephew or, or your little cousins or, you know, God, godchildren or whatever it is. Um, you know, and, and whoever you have that influence in, uh, you know, try and, and, and be that positive influence as much as possible. All right, so from here, I'm going to go age groups, and then we're going to work our way up through, through the age groups. But if you, if you don't have any toddlers left, it's okay. It, the good thing about any of this is if you missed any of it, um, or if you haven't taken care of any of this, you, know, you can catch up along the way. Um, toddlers, I had to look it up. In my head, toddlers are like two and three, but apparently it's one. As soon as you're one, you're a toddler, and then once you're turn four, you're no longer a toddler. Um, so I guess I have no more toddlers, uh, but, you know, teach them by showing at first, you know, you're not going to sit down your one-year-old and be like, sit down here, let, let's talk about budgeting or here, look at, this is the, this is the stock market. You no, know, that they're not, they don't care, uh, nor should they you teach them by showing at first, let them see you spend money. Uh, and then as soon as they say, I want that, whatever that happens to be, um that then you can start teaching money well that costs money and, and and they don't have to understand the math behind it because you know my kid's four and he's not very good at math uh you, you know we're working on it but you know he's got one and two is you know three and, and little things like that but that's about as far as it goes so you know teach them by by example at first and and something i realized when my oldest was younger is um the idea of debit cards and credit cards was hard for him to understand. Uh, so I had to go and use cash, even if it was going to the ATM and getting that same money I was about to spend at the grocery store, but getting that money and then buying groceries with cash. It's an extra step. It's a pain. I know. But seeing that money transaction, because he understood what money was and he understood we were getting things in return, but he was having a hard time at that age understanding the card is money. And now we're getting groceries. But when he saw money leaving, groceries coming back, it was easier for him to understand. So as soon as they say, I want start teaching personal finances, uh, just show them that you're spending money. It's okay to spend money. You know, they, that's their first experience. Play little games. Um, you know, play little games. My kid loves playing he, he, a chef. Um, and and uh, I he takes my order and then I have to pay him, you know, uh, kids like grocery shopping, whatever it is. And, and this is a good chance to get um, a piggy bank for them uh, and, and have them start saving and have them start. Um, that's where my kids piggy bank lives right there on my desk. Uh, it, I didn't go get it for the presentation. That's genuinely where, where it sits. And, and he gets so excited when he finds coins and he asks, can I go put them on, on my, in my piggy bank? Uh, across our road trip, anytime he found coins that I you know, use cash to pay for something, oh, can I save this? Can I put this in my piggy bank? I think he lost half the money. It's probably in his car seat. He may have more coins in his car seat than he does in his piggy bank. But the idea is he gets excited about saving it. And I don't think he yet knows what he's going to spend that money on. 
uh, but he sees that there's more than there was before, and that makes it exciting for him. Um, we're working on coin names, you know, as soon as they're old enough to, to handle the coins, obviously, safely, you don't want them to eat the things. If they're still putting everything in their mouth, that, that takes priority over teaching money. Uh, but once they're, you're comfortable with them having those small items, um, teaching quarters, pennies, nickels, and, and, and yes, the nickel is bigger than the dime, but the dime is worth two nickels. And that's really mind blowing and confusing to little ones sometimes. Yes, the quarter is the fun and exciting one. The penny's kind of boring, but that nickel dime, that's a hard one to get through to them. Like, well, this one's bigger. It looks more like a quarter. Why is it not worth more money? Um, and that, then you could go into a history lesson if you wanted to on, on nickels and dimes and, and coins, but you might lose their attention at that age. Um, so, you know, show them your spending, get that piggy bank, get that saving going. And then uh, somewhere after toddler years, you, you can look into getting them their own bank account. Um, and, and yes, maybe at this age, they're probably rather feed the pigeons than put money into a bank. Um, and that's valid and that's okay. Uh, but, you know, starting to, um, and it can be linked to your account. So there's no fees or anything like that. You don't want them paying fees. Uh, but most banks, credit unions have the option to, and, and, and it doesn't have to be something where you give them access to it at this age. Maybe this is more of a tool for you to put money away for them, for their future. Um, but, you know, at some point you, you got to start introducing them to, to banking. Um, and then you get to the preschool age groups, three to five. Um, you know, we've gotten coins and, and now we start going over the values of those coins, the pennies, the nickels and the dimes and maybe adding them up and, you know, two dimes is 10. You need four quarters to make a dollar. Uh, but you can also start working on wants versus needs. And, and it may seem like they don't get it at that age, but they do. Um, you know, I, I, I tried it on my eight year old and he's about to turn nine and he is really good at wants versus needs. That's not to say that he doesn't try to buy everything he wants. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get, I haven't succeeded at that yet, but he knows the difference. And, and if he doesn't like the idea, he'll make sure he reminds me, like, do you really need that? Um, so start going over some of the cost of items that they like. How much is a pizza? How much are the chicken nuggets and French fries? Uh, how much are the cake pops? You know, <laughs> if you get it, whatever it is that they like, um, you know, explain to them, you know, th this is right now they got the breakfast sandwiches for two fifty you know, two for 550 or whatever it is. And, or, you know, whatever, you know, they got that hot and ready pizza for this much money. Um, you know, whatever it is that they like, start putting price tags on things and, and that'll kind of help them. Um, and, and if they have money, if you give them an allowance, if you haven't, it might be a good time to start. But if you, they do have money, birthday money, whatever it is, allow them to buy things here and there. Uh, it's okay to, for them to learn to spend money because, you know, money is, is, is inevitably going to be spent. So, you know, allow them to buy little things. You know, my kid won't buy things. He, though I'm my oldest, just doesn't like spending his money. Um, he bought like a chocolate bar one year. That was it all year. He bought one chocolate bar because uh, I told him he couldn't have it. And then he said, what if I buy it? And I'm like, all right, whatever, thinking he's not going to buy it. And he bought it for himself. And, you know, I was like, oh, cool. At least he spent some money. Uh, so now that he's getting older, he's losing that. He's like, oh, I want to buy a video game. I, I have some money. I can buy whatever. Um, so allow them to buy things when they're little so they get that excitement of seeing money go, maybe change coming back or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and start saving. It's kind of cool, like this little story bought here. Oh, I got a dollar. Oh, I got a lot of dollars because I've been saving for a while. Remind them debt is not fun. You know, you start to, if they borrow money, if your kid borrows money, make them pay you back. Because <laughs> if you've ever had any kind of debt, I think we've, I, most of us have. I know I have. Um, taking out the debt was not that big a deal. It's paying it back that's really difficult. It's paying it back that's uh, really beat yourself up, beat yourself up over. Um, you shouldn't too much, but I know I do. I know I did. So, you know, if they borrow a dollar, if my kid borrows a dollar from me, he's going to pay me back the dollar. Not because I need his dollar, dollar 50 or whatever it is. It's because he said, can I borrow this money? And, and, and he borrowed it with 
he better pay me back. And if he takes too long, I'm going to charge him interest. You know, I'm going to charge him an extra quarter for that $10 if I don't get it back soon. You know, that's really high interest rate. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not a loan shark. Maybe it's maybe I'll charge him a nickel. Um, but, you know, that feeling of having to pay debt back is important to try and get that, get that started so that someday they get that credit card and they don't go on a big shopping spree because they're not used to the feeling of, I'm gonna, I should hold back because this is going to cost me more. This is going to... I'm going to really dislike paying this back down the road. So debt is not fun um, and, and help them learn that by making you pay, making them pay you back. Um, as they get older, bigger goals, you know, maybe they, maybe they want, uh, you know, in, in grade school, as they go through elementary into middle, into, you know, into the early middle school years, bigger goals. Let them in on bigger family purchases. You want a Nintendo Switch? Let's save up for it as a family. You guys want to go on a trip? Let's save up for it so the next year we can go do this trip and drive to here, fly to there, go to Disneyland, whatever it is. And, and, and you allow them to kind of become part of the process, even if it's just a small little part of the process, but saving for those big goals, for those family trips, for those family purchases. You guys want a puppy? We're gonna need about this much money to adopt the puppy. We're gonna need about this much money for puppy startup costs. Get it done or we don't get a puppy. You know, little things like that. And, and maybe that's why we don't go out to eat pizza. And maybe that's why we don't go do this or that, because we're saving up money to reach our goal of getting a puppy, um, which is coming soon. You might see them at the next Swim Live. I don't know. Um, and grocery expenses, uh, you know, bring up grocery shopping. I talk to people, uh, high school kids who have no clue how much groceries cost because they just never went along, never paid attention. Um, and, and if you grocery shop, you know, it, it's expensive. Uh, so shopping along, having tag along when, when you go back to school shopping, not just to look and pick and choose, I want this one or that one, but to also come up to you, with you to the register and see how much things cost. Maybe we go to this store because they have better deals. Maybe we go to that other store to get this and this store to get this, and we're going to get our best deal. They start to have friends' birthday parties, tons of them. If they have income, maybe have them pay a little. Maybe have them, you know, not the whole thing or or maybe the whole thing if, if you really want to, but at least pick up some of the cost uh, of that gift, whatever that gift happens to be. And allow them to be more open to the idea like, oh, all this stuff that's fun, that's going to birthday parties, doing this, doing that costs money. Um, at some point in the middle school years, maybe you introduce the debit card. Cash is still really important because, you know, we see money going away. We see money coming back. We see our money running out. So don't underestimate cash. Don't get rid of cash. But honestly, whether we like it or not, you know, electronic payment forms are there. Maybe you give them a little bit more access to their money, where, which you still have control over ultimately. Um, we get a new stadium here in San Diego in a couple of weeks, uh, Snapdragon Stadium for my uh, SDSU Aztecs. Uh, and I just learned yesterday while I was reading up on it, they're not taking cash, which is really kind of a bummer because I do enjoy still having the ability to use cash. Uh, paperless, ticketless, cashless, um, which will be very interesting. Uh, they say that people will adjust to it quickly. I guess I'll have to. But, you know, the the... It's, it's a reality in, in today's world that some, you just need to have that electronic form. So why not start, um, you know, now? And it's always a good time to start budgeting. If your kids don't have a budget when they get to those early middle school years, time to start one. Um, doesn't have to be an in-depth budget. It'd be very basic. Here's my spending money. Here's my uh, saving money. Here's, you know, what I plan to give or whatever the case may be. As they get into the teenage years, they may start working, they may start making their own money and then feel like they could do whatever they want with it. But really, do, can they? Um, that's up to you to decide. Um, but there's a semi-annual uh, taking stock with teens survey uh, by Piper and Sandler. And you know, teens self-reported spending over $2,300 in 2022. Uh, that's a lot. 
they're making money, they're spending money. And, and, you know, I would imagine the older teens are doing most of the spending, but, you know, only 26% of those 13 to 21 who were surveyed said their parents taught them how to manage money. Again, teach them how to manage the money the best you can. Food is the biggest expense at this age. Um, if you guys want to guess where they go eat, mostly, I did not guess, but Chick-fil-A for the survey was the top, uh, the top food place. Uh, followed by Chipotle, and then what was my original guess, Starbucks. Um, favorite place for kids to shop? Amazon. And it, it's not the mall anymore. It's not going out and hanging out with your friends and, and, and going shopping. It's Amazon. Get it at the tip of your fingers from anywhere. Uh, favorite clothing brand was Nike. Uh, all really interesting stuff. I, and I could see the Nike I could see the Amazon, Chick-fil-A was a surprise, but they're out there spending money uh, when they're hanging out with their friends, when they're, you know, a part of that food is hanging out, you know, um, they may not be going to Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, or Starbucks on their own. And I don't know about you guys, but I know I went to Starbucks with some friends a couple times, um, you know, just to hang out, to go on dates, to get dumped. Uh, <laughs> That was just bad luck. But, you know, they're everywhere. At least here in San Diego, Starbucks are everywhere. Um, but, you know, there's definitely um, lots of different spending opportunities. Uh, you know, so continuing on, on with teens, a good time to introduce credit. Hopefully they understand the idea of having to pay you back, but now understanding how the credit industry works, maybe helping them pull their credit report to make sure that there's no errors on their credit report making sure that they understand that they can fall into debt and debt is not fun to pay back. Um, allow mistakes to happen. Some of us, I don't know about you guys, but some of us learn better when we mess up and, and learn the hard way. Uh, your kid might be that way. Sometimes that, you know, racking up that first credit card debt and then realizing, oh man, I can't pay it back. Mom, dad, help. And then being able to say, now you got yourself in this trouble, get yourself out. I'm not bailing you out. It might be $500 that you can give them to bail them out at this point, but this will be a learning experience so that they don't fall into debt further on down the road. Keep a positive attitude, your teens. Uh, I hear, my, I don't have teens yet, but I hear that they can be tough sometimes. Um, I like to think that I was perfect. I never gave my parents a hard time, but you know, I hear most of them do. So keep a positive attitude. They may, you may get some pushback and some fight here. Um, but talk about your mistakes, talk about what you learned, what you wish you'd have done better, what you did well, what you didn't do well, and, and, and really allow yourself to kind of open up as you get here. You know, if you feel more comfortable, allow them to learn, learn more about your family's financial things. You know, how much is rent? How much is mortgage? How much is this? How much is that? Little things like that, depending on your comfort level, but the more you can share with them, the better. Uh, four main points you really want to drive, or five main points that you really want to drive in um, um, making money. It's important to understand whether they're making money off of you doing their chores uh, or extra chores around the house, uh, you know, or, or babysitting, walking the dog, the neighbor's dog, um, you know, eventually maybe a part-time job, whatever it is, making money. Uh, the importance of that when they get that first job, taxes, what you make isn't always what you get to take home right away. Um, spending, you know, money, you spend money, spending money smartly, you know, not just throwing money around. I got paid. I, I'm broke the next day. Uh, the importance of saving. Every time you get paid, pay yourself first. Put some money away for a rainy day. It's coming. We're all going to spend money on something we don't want to spend sooner or later. Teaching that to your kids can be a very important lesson investing as soon as they're old enough you know make your money work for you make your money grow make investing exciting um you know and, and, and try and start that positive habit and then giving you know that's the other thing you can do with money is you can help people out give gifts you can help out on in causes that you like you can do you know and and that's the other component to it um some games you can play with your little ones um you know, I don't know what Bluey and, and his dad is, are, are playing here, but, you know, play grocery store and bank, like I mentioned, you know, when, when they're little, when they're, when they're really young. Let's play grocery store. Oh, I want to buy bananas. Oh, here's this much money. Now your kid may say, you know, I'm, 
I order a hamburger or whatever from his, you know, restaurant. And, and like, how much is that? 35, 43, 85. I don't know what that means. Here's, here's my, here's my money. Give me my change. Um, you know, cause he's just turned four, but, but he understands that there's a money to it. At some point I'm like, no, buddy, that's a little pricey for burger. Um, whatever that 35, 83, 95 means or whatever. Uh, right now he's just kind of throwing numbers out there. Very excited that he knows numbers. Um, but, you know, play little store games, whatever it is that they enjoy doing. Um, or as they get older, let them shop for something real. Hey, you know, buddy, we need ketchup. Here's $5. Go find, let's, when we go to the grocery store, let's help me find the ketchup. You know, help me find, you know, whatever it is. Help me as they get even older in the middle school. Let's, let's you plan out dinner tonight. Here's 25 bucks. What are you going to make us for dinner? What are you going to, you know, you might end up eating spaghetti or frozen pizzas or whatever, but my year old's big on hot dogs. He knew he, that was just his go-to when I had to stop playing the game because every time it was just hot dogs. Um, like you, you want to do dinner? Yeah. Hot dogs. I don't need this. I don't need that. We have ketchup. Um, it's like, you don't want any of that on your hot dog, but I don't want a plain hot dog on a bun. That's not, that's not hot dog for me. Um, <clears throat> But you encourage savings as they get older, you know, the piggy banks to the bank accounts to investing as they get even older, help them plan big purchases. Like I mentioned, you know, hey, let's go to Disneyland. We need about this much money to go. Um, I told my kids, you like this road trip that we just did? You want to do another one? We need about this much money. Save it up and then we can plan it. Um you know, as they get older into their teenage years or you increase their allowance, increase their responsibilities maybe have them share some of the costs, uh, maybe have them help with, as I mentioned, friends gifts, or I'm going to give you this much money for shoes. You want those nice, nicer shoes. You want those Jordans. You need to put in the rest from your savings, from your money, because I will buy you shoes. I will not buy you those expensive shoes. Um, you know, little things like that, that you can do along the way. Um, I know I'm going a little long here, so I'm trying to go a little fast. And then lastly, maybe a savings challenge match especially if they get older, you want money to buy a car, you want to buy your own car, how much money do you need? Uh, $6,000. Let's throw a number out there. Um, all right. You save $3,000, I will match you $3,000, assuming that your budget allows. Again, I'm just throwing numbers out there. I'm not saying, go. Well, this is the price tag for a car. But, you know, an idea, I will match you dollar for dollar up to two thousand dollars and then dollar for you know 50 cents for the next thousand so you save three thousand i'll give you twenty five hundred um you know little things like that to encourage them to save uh and 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 plan for those bigger purchases can go a long way um any questions i, I know i went a little fast there i know there's a lot of info like i said my, one of my favorite presentations and i have like an hour-long version of this so I apologize that I went a little long, but you can also continue learning. We have a podcast called Talk Wealth to Me. Um, I always tell parents, my favorite one for parents is Not Your Grandparents Economics with Dr. Jim Charkins. The way he explains uh, how economics should be taught, even to little kids, uh, even to those little elementary school age kids, opportunity cost and, and um I think it's my favorite, one of my favorite episodes that we've done on the podcast. And then why don't we learn more about money when we're kids? Um, that's another one that has to do with kids. There's a bunch of them on there that have to do with kids. Um, you can find them wherever you get your other favorite podcasts. Um, and, and you can always reach out to us uh, if you have any questions for more tips, more advice. Again, this is the stuff I like to talk about. Uh, so I'd be more than happy to chit chat about, you know, children and money. Um, you can always reach out and, and shoot us an, an email or a tweet or whatever. Um, and then join us in two weeks. Uh, we talk how to talk to your friends and family about your budget. And it's usually not, Hey, I have a whole bunch of extra money. Let's go do everything. It's usually the opposite. You know, I'm, I'm on a debt payoff journey. I need to, you know, take care of this. I need to save up for that. Uh, finances are a little tight. How do you relay that message to loved ones, to friends, uh, to those that you hang out with and, and spend the most money with uh, and, and, and how to best 
do that uh, or some tips on how to get that conversation started. All right. And that is it for me. If you guys don't have any questions, I do appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with me. Um, we'll see you all in, in two weeks. Thank you.